What's up? This is Jad T. Jones, and welcome to my official first podcast episode. So, what is this podcast, and why should you care? This is a collection of conversations that your father should have had with you. So, why have I decided to create these podcasts? My mission is to create a podcast seven days a week for a full year. I want to get into deep conversation with you and talk about everything that I wish my father would have talked to me about uh, while I was growing up. And for those of you who have been following me for a while, you know my father passed away about 10 years now. And I really crave having those conversations. And uh, I wish I had a man in my life, particularly him, um, to, to just have these man-to-man conversations with and so because I have that craving because I have that need I figured you know what there are probably a lot of men who are just like me who would like to have these daily man-to-man conversations and explorations about what it means to be a man um, how to move through the world as a man you know we'll talk about also about women we'll talk about success And just generally, you know, like men these days, we don't have that support. We don't have those quality men to talk to and get into discussions with. And so what uh, the space I'm going to create here is a space for these conversations. And so I'm going to uh, eventually like this podcast is going to get better and better regarding audio sound regarding hopefully building a a podcasting studio to the point where these podcasts are also available in video form. And also uh, I'll be having guests to interview and, you know, talk about all these manly topics, the exploration of what does it mean to be a man? How can we be more successful uh, as men, more fulfilled? How can we have that inner peace inside, that peace where we look in the mirror We like who we see and we look in the mirror and we think, you know what? I know I've got what it takes. Because as a man, that's what we want. That is our peace. To know that we have what it takes to take on the world, to be at peace that we're we're going through this world in in a successful way where we're facing what we need to face and we're we're successful to the degree we want to be successful. And also uh, to a place where we are at peace with uh, our skills with women, with our relationship life, right? Um, The way I see it, being a man and also being good with women, those two topics are inseparable. Because when we talk about what does it mean to be a man, a very big chunk of that is also, uh, you know, how do we have the, how do we get this woman thing handled and make sure we have the ability to bring quality women into our lives so that we move through this world with a life partner, with uh, one person or a set of people to share our lives with. There are so many uh, men that I've spoken to who who have told me, you know what, Jad, I have all the trappings of success. I I have my own business. I have a lot of money. I have a nice house. I go on trips. I've done everything I want to do but I'm not able to attract the kind of women that I want to attract. And because of that, my life is empty. Everything seems meaningless. I have no fulfillment and no peace. And I just feel sad and unfulfilled. And so a man needs women in his life. A heterosexual male needs women in his life too. So um, this is going to be included in our conversation. How can I be a man... And how can I also be a man who is able to bring women into my life at will? And not just any women, but quality women, women that I feel that I deserve. So welcome to the podcast. I want this to be a collaborative creation, meaning I want you to help me in the creation of this channel, of this podcast. And so below in the comments, I want you to give your opinion on what do you think of this idea? Also, what are the topics you would like us to cover in the following months, in the, in the next year? Um, how do you think, what do you think I could add? What dynamic do you think I could add to this podcast 
that would make it more beneficial to everyone, more valuable. So I really want your collaboration in this. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to do here is I want to multiply myself and basically clone myself to a point where I'm walking around with you every single day. I'm in your pocket every single day where we can have these conversations together. You can listen in and then after you listen in, you can write in to me and, you know, give me your opinions. Tell me what uh, if you want me to expand on a topic or what topic you want to talk about. And in that way, we will be in dialogue together. So I want to be that man in your life, that man that you can have these man to man conversations with the conversations that we crave. So in this first episode, I would like to tell you my story and I would like to tell you why I'm doing this. Okay, why am I creating this podcast? Why is this a collection of conversations your father should have had with you? So growing up, my father was absent. Now, it's not because he was a bad man and it's not because he was irresponsible. What happened is that the world pushed him out. Okay, he had a family and he needed to provide for his family. He had a job that demanded travel. So all so most of the time, most of my childhood, he was away uh, in different countries, um, you know, making money, sending the money back to the family. Uh, you know, the poor guy, he was lonely a lot of the times. He was away from his family, but he was doing what, what, you know, what the world asked of him. He was being a real man and being responsible uh, and, and providing for his family, making sure that we were okay. Now, he, so he did provide for us in a very good way in terms of uh, providing food and shelter and all of that stuff, sending us to good schools. However, because he was absent, he was not able to raise me, right? He was not able to raise me. And so what happens is I was a man raised by a woman. I was raised by my mother. Now, my mother is an extremely delicate, gentle, sensitive, extremely feminine, soft-spoken, sweet woman. And so she raised me the best she could, but she raised me to be a good boy. Okay, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. A lot of us men were raised uh, by our mothers and our mothers, uh, they raised us to be good boys. Now, the problem with being raised to be a good boy is once you once you're, you turn around like 11, 12, 13, 14 and up, once you start being a man, and in my, in my view, um, a boy starts turning into a man uh, depending on his situation, depending on his circumstances, it could be as early as eight years old. So uh, to me, when I see kids, um, I, start, I start looking at them and depending on their situation, uh, some boys need to turn into men by the time of 8, 10, 11, 12, you know, definitely by the time you're 13, 14, 15. Uh, I, look as a, I look at a 14-year-old, that's a man. All right. I look at, at him as a man. Now he's he's still starting his his journey and he has a lot to learn. But from that point on, I'm not treating him as a little boy anymore. This guy has to go and face challenges. Um, he has to start taking responsibility. He has to learn about the tough lessons in life. Um, and you know, it's time to start building that backbone. Okay. So when I say my my journey into manhood, I am not talking about when I was 20 or anything like that. I'm talking about when I was 10, 11 years old. When I, basically for me, my journey into manhood started when I started getting interested in women. And for me, I, I, get it, I started getting interesting, uh, interested in girls before I even hit puberty. So um, I remember really wanting to be able to get over my fear. Uh, I was incredibly shy, incredibly insecure growing up. And so uh, I remember wanting to get over my fear and I, I must have been like seven or eight years old and I would see those girls in the playground over there and I would see these other boys who were kind of like the bad boys and they were going up to the girls, you know, tugging on their hair, uh, you know, doing all these naughty things that little boys do and they like girls and I wished I could do that. 
Uh, but I had no one to show me how to, you know, how to get over my fear, how to go talk to girls. And from that point, from that point, I think I was seven or eight years old. I was on the playground and I was observing these guys and I just wished I could be as free and as fearless as they were. And I wish I could just let go and have fun like they did, right? To go, uh, you know, play with the girls. Uh, but I had no one in my life to to consult, to, to tell me, okay, this is how you overcome your fear. Um, you know, even if you feel fear here, here, go take action anyways, and so on and so forth. And so from a very early age, I, I was really like, I was just like, you know, why isn't there someone to help me with this? Why am I not supported? And then when I was 11, uh, you know, I remember I had a best friend and he was okay, he was good with girls and he even had a girlfriend. And, you know, I was too shy to even talk to girls. And then, you know, I always felt bad because it was him and his girlfriend and then me and then her friend and then me. But I was acting all shy and awkward. And so basically I, I wasn't raised and I, and I always felt I always felt that absence of a male figure in my life. And I really struggled. I struggled because I felt like I was trapped inside of an invisible prison. Like I was inside. I had so much to offer. I had so much I wanted to do and say and be. But I was trapped inside of my mind. And I just had to sit there. I felt like an observer. Like I just had to sit there and watch life pass me by because I did not know how to break out of my shell and so basically that continued all the way through my teen years until when I was 14 I try uh, I started taking more risks I uh, started talking to girls more and things started looking up looking up for me uh, from that point even though I, ha I had a roller coaster of a ride I'm not going to get into it right now but uh, uh, that's when I finally like that's that's when I started you know really taking risks and taking things into my own hands and so if we come back to the why, why am I doing this? It's because I had to take things into my own hands and raise myself and observe the men around me and learn from them and then start to emulate them. And that's how I kind of uh, turned myself from boy to man. man. I used to look at those boys in the playground from, from the time I was in grade three. So, you know, I have been observing if you want to call them alpha males, <laughs> I've been observing alpha males since I was seven or eight years old. I would just sit there and I would watch. Okay, they do this, they do that. They do this, they do that. They say this, they say that. When they do this, the girls giggle. So ever since I was seven years old, and now I'm 38, so that's 31 years of observation. And, you know, maybe some of you are listening and you're like, ah, come on, you weren't really consciously, you know, believe what you will, but I was consciously mapping out how to socialize and how to be that kind of uh, outgoing alpha male kind of guy who talks to women ever since I was seven or eight, uh, simply because I had no one to, to talk to, no one to ask. And so since then, I have been uh, observing behaviors and responses and I continue to do the, that to this day, it's something I'm obsessed with and fascinated by, and it's an endless learning. And, and uh, you know, after 30 years of observation, um, I look at, at, at social situations, I look at people socializing with each other, uh, especially men and women, and everything beca has become so clear to me. I, I see patterns now. Uh, if you've watched the movie The Matrix, uh, there's a moment where Neo, he's fighting that, that, that agent and then finally all of a sudden he sees, he sees the code. So instead of seeing an agent and walls and, and a room, instead of that he just starts seeing the computer code. And once he starts seeing the computer code, everything slows down. And then the, the agent can't shoot him, the agent can't hit him because he, he recognizes the patterns, he sees, he gets it. And so I'm not saying that uh, I'm not saying that I'm I'm so advanced that I get everything and I see everything, but that's how I feel. I feel like I get it. 
I get it. Everything has become very apparent to me. And that is what allows me to take something so complex and explain it in such a simple way. That is what enables me to take a guy that has been stuck for three years, five years, or even 10 years without any results uh, with women. And then in a, in a short number of months, between three to six months, some guys take longer, nine months. Uh, but in a short matter of months, I can reverse that whole process for him. And because of my ability to recognize patterns and simplify, uh, these guys get breakthroughs. And so my purpose, the reason why, the reason for these conversations is because um, what I realized is that all, if, if I were given a map of how things worked, of how to be a man, of how to overcome my fear, of how to be successful, of how to talk to women and so forth, when we have a map, when, 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 when knowledge is passed down, then what that does is it unlocks our potential. It unlocks our potential. So the stupidest thing, the, ba the, the biggest waste of time is to reinvent the wheel. Everything has already been figured out already. So um, the, the proper way a man should be raised is not that he must figure everything out for himself, but rather his elders should take time to explain things to him, to give him uh, the roadmaps, the frameworks, the modes of operation, the patterns, so that instead of him wasting time discovering those patterns, what he will spend his time on is to go out and learn how to implement those patterns. Whether it's how do you, how do you uh, come up with a goal? How do you find your life purpose? Um, how do you become persistent? How do you become relentless? Whatever it is. And so... Um, I believe that we were all born with this lim limitless potential within us. And in order to unlock that potential quickly, you must give a man the information he needs. You must give him the map. You must explain the matrix to him. And once you do, and, you know, it's not enough. Uh, information alone is not enough. But if that man then takes that information and combines it with courage and then goes out and takes action and then combines that courageous action with persistence, with consistency and focus, well, then that man can move mountains. And so my purpose, the big why is I want to empower you to live a wonderful life and I want to empower you to become a successful man because the more successful people there are in the world, the better the world becomes. Successful people, people who succeed through integrity, they treat people better, they treat the world better, better, and they contribute positively to the world. And so I want to create an army of men who are contributing positively to the world. I don't only want you to succeed in your love life and your, your financial life for your own selfish uh, reasons, but because uh, having you um, succeed in your love life will making, make you a happier human being. And also uh, that support of a woman is going to um, elevate your probability of success. And when you're that successful, happy man who's in a healthy relationship, you're going to become a powerful force of nature and you're going to have a very big positive impact on the world. And now if we multiply that and have a hundred thousand of those uh, that kind of men or a million of that kind of men, imagine the compounding positive impact that is going to create. So the things I value the most in life are freedom and time as well as relationships. My purpose is to give you the freedom the freedom from don't be uh, not being trapped in your mind, but rather, I, I, my purpose is to unlock your potential so that you may go out there and give your gifts to the world. I believe it is a tremendous loss to have someone not give their gift. Everybody has a gift. You need to find yours and then give it to the world. So my gift is what I'm doing right now. 
helping men, empowering men, filling them with inspiration, helping them believe in themselves, giving them a map of success that empowers them to go out and make their lives better and the, the, the lives of others better. So what is your gift? Maybe your gift is music and you make people forget about their problems and you make people happy. Maybe your gift is that uh, you're an engineer and you create wonderful uh, energy saving or environmental uh, saving uh, inventions. Whatever it is uh, that your gift is, you have a duty to give it. And you cannot give your gift if you're trapped in fear, if you have low self-esteem, uh, if you spend all of your tri time trying to fix yourself, then you're not going to give your gift or if you don't believe in yourself, right? So my purpose is to unlock the potential within you so that you may live a life that you were meant to live, a life that you deserve to live. I believe you deserve happiness. I believe you deserve to be in a wonderful relationship and I believe you you deserve and you should spend your time serving your purpose because your purpose is uh, the same. When I say your purpose, your purpose is the same as your gift, your gift that you were put on this uh, earth to give. So that's what I believe. And so to wrap it up, these are the conversations of men. I want you to imagine that we're sitting around a virtual fire every day. At the end of the day, maybe there's a sunset and we're discussing all the ways of how to be a man, how to unlock our potential, how to live a fearless life, or let's not say fearless life because there is fear, how to live a courageous life because courage is, the, is taking action in the presence of fear. Fear is beautiful, fear is wonderful, fear drives us, okay? So how to live a courageous, inspired life where we are aiming high, we are not settling for mediocrity, we are not believing in limitations. We are only seeing ourselves as unlimited potentiality. And together, through these discussions, through these masterminds, through this brotherhood, we are standing for our greatness. So welcome to the podcast. I'm very excited for what's to come. And I'm very curious to see how this is going to unfold. Uh, as I said before, leave your comments below, leave your feedback. What did you think? How did you like this first episode? Uh, what suggestions do you have? And I will talk to you tomorrow. This is your brother, Jad T. Jones. Take care.